America's most iconic buildings, the very symbols of democracy and power, were built by the hands that were never meant to share them in promise. The White House, the U.S. Capitol, Wall Street, and more are all constructed in part by enslaved African laborers. Their names are often forgotten, but their contributions are undeniable. Let's take a moment to acknowledge the brilliance, skills, and resilience of those who laid the foundation of this nation, literally. The White House. While history often credits famous architects, enslaved black craftsmen quarried the stone, carved intricate woodworks, and built the very walls of America's most powerful resident. Men like Daniel Bell, Philip Reed, and Peter Fawcett played a role in this construction, yet their stories remain largely untold. Like the U.S. Capitol, enslaved laborers worked tirelessly to construct the buildings that now house the U.S. Congress. They quarried sandstones, made bricks, and even helped erect the dome that stands as a symbol of American democracy. Then you have Wall Street. Before it became the financial heartbeat of the world, Wall Street was built with the slave labor. In fact, New York City was once the second largest slave market in America. The Monticello, Thomas Jefferson's Grand Estate, was built almost entirely by the enslaved. Skilled black craftsmen from blacksmiths to bricklayers constructed this vision, yet were never credited as the architects of history. Hell, the University of Virginia, another one of Jefferson's projects, this prestigious university was constructed by enslaved workers who laid the bricks, cut the timber, and built the structures that still stand today. Now, I couldn't really find no images for this one, but this is a memorial of the enslaved laborers at the University of Virginia. And so I'm going to go through this real quick, show you out a few images like you see sliding across the screen, you know what I'm saying, to verify my claim in this video. It says the memorial was built to honor the lives and legacies of the enslaved laborers at the University of Virginia. A virtual tour highlights these stories. A timeline shows the process of making the memorial. The community of enslaved laborers and their descendants are the heart of the memorial. An interactive community cloud memorialized the laborers. An introduction to the descendants community highlights their collective voice. So you see the people as they honor the ancestors, those who built the university, those lives built on building all the history that we see around us that they don't get credit for. The memorial is one part of the university's effort to recognize and acknowledge its history. A timeline traces the events of Isabella Gibbons that sheds light on one of the laborers' experiences. So this is Isabella Gibbons. She was one that had to help build or forced to build. I ain't gonna say had to help, she was forced to build. The U.S. Treasury Building, the very institute that controls America's wealth, was also built by enslaved hands. The South Carolina State House, enslaved Africans quarried the stones and built this government structure, yet they had no rights under the laws that upheld. Fort Sumter, built by enslaved men, this coastal fortress would later play a crucial role in the Civil War, the very war that would lead to their descendants' so-called emancipation. These are just a few examples of how so-called Blacks didn't just build America economically, they built it literally. Their labor, craftsmanship, and ingenuity shaped the very infrastructures of this nation, yet their names have been left out of the history books. It's time to give them the honor they deserve. But without them, America, as we know, it wouldn't be what it is today. It wouldn't exist. So this would be a part of an ongoing series I'm doing. The healers, the innovators, the creators, and the builders, the minds and hands that made this world. So don't forget to like and share and stay tuned for the next episode as we dive into the builders, the architects and engineers who shaped America's skyline. On behalf of Akuno Sankofa Bay, you know what I'm saying? Jay, where you at? We're trying to help our people elevate. Hope. H O P E. We're giving them hope. Giving them hope. We doing what we gotta do, you know. Shoot Every day, one step at a time, man. We gonna make it happen. Helping our people out of yeah. Sometimes I practice focus thought and meditate. I'm trying to come with other ways to help our people elevate and seeking knowledge make me levitate. The lifted mental state is what results from how we orchestrate. This for the family's sake. Let's self reflect and self evaluate. And every day, make sure the steps you take, you calculate. Receive a master's fate. I know I can't exist without the hate. But that's okay. I balance that with higher self today. Success is on this way. And after that, my flesh can pass away. wake up in a house that was built by slaves and I watch my daughters, two beautiful black young women, head off to school, waving goodbye to their father, the president of the United States. Twelve American presidents own slaves and eight presidents own slaves while they were in office. 
For instance, Andrew Jackson called slaves unfortunate creatures, but he owned more than 160. And Zachary Taylor said owning slaves was a constitutional right worth going to war to keep. Behind the proud history of the White House are the black hands of hundreds of slaves. The builders, black architects and engineers who laid the foundation of America. Horace King of 1807-1885, a former enslaved man who became a master bridge builder, designing covered bridges across the South, including in Alabama and Georgia. Robert Robinson Taylor of 1868-1942, the first black graduate of MIT and the architect behind many buildings at the Tuskegee Institute. Wallace Augustus Rayfield of 1873-1941, one of the first black licensed architects in the United States. He designed numerous churches, schools, and businesses including the 16th Street Baptist Church in Birmingham, Alabama. Vertner Woodson Tandy of 1885 to 1949, the first black licensed architect in New York and the designer of the famous Villa Lawaro for Madam C.J. Walker. Paul Revere Williams of 1894 to 1980, a celebrated architect who designed luxury homes for Hollywood elites, as well as iconic buildings like the LAX airport theme building. Julian Abele, 1881 to 1950, the first black student at the University of Pennsylvania's Architect School. He was the chief designer at Duke University's campus and worked on the Philadelphia Museum of Art. So he designed Duke University's campus and the Philadelphia Museum of Art. Beverly Lorraine Green, 1915 to 1957, the first licensed black female architect in the United States. She worked on projects like UNESCO's headquarters in Paris. Norma Merrick Sklarik of 1926 to 2012, she was the first black woman licensed as an architect in New York and California. She co-designed the Pacific Design Center and Terminal 1 of LAX. John Chase of 1925-2012, he was the first licensed black architect in Texas and the founder of the National Organization of Minority Architects, NOMA. Clarence W. Wigginton, 1883-1967, designed over 90 buildings in St. Paul, Minnesota, including the Harriet Island Pavilion and the Highland Park Water Tower. So all y'all that are from Minnesota, they're familiar with these buildings. Clarence Wigington was the one who built those. Albert Cassell of 1895 to 1969. He designed the building for Howard University, Morgan State, and the District of Columbia. So it wouldn't be no Howard University, Morgan State, or District of Columbia without this brother designing those buildings. Moses McKissick III of 1879 and 1952 co-founded McKissick and McKissick, the first Black-owned architecture firm that helped design the Tuskegee Airmen Training Facility. Hilliard Robinson of 1899 to 1986 introduced modernist housing in Black communities, designing Langston's Terrence Dwelling in D.C., one of the first federally funded housing projects. And so the Langston Terrace dwellings in D.C. would not be there if it wasn't for Hilliard Robinson. Leon Bridges of 1932 to 2015 the first black graduate of the University of Arkansas's architectural program and a pioneer in modern black architecture. William Sidney Pittman of 1875 to 1958 designed the Pythian Temple in Dallas and other historical buildings across the South. John A. Langford of 1874 to 1946, known as the Dean of Black Architect, he designed the True Reformer Building in DC and several HBCU campuses. David Adage, 1966 to present, a contemporary architect who designed the National Museum of African American History and Culture in Washington, D.C. Henry A. Boyd of 1876 to 1959 built Nashville's historical Boyd Building, one of the first Black-owned office buildings in the city. As we reflect on the builders, the architects, the engineers, and the craftsmen who laid the very foundation of America, we honor their resilient skills and undeniable impact. Their contributions stand tall in our cities, yet their names are too often left out of the history books. We bring them into the light, ensuring their legacy is never forgotten. But the foundation is not just in stone and steel, it is also in the minds of the future generations. In our next video, we will shift our focus on the educators, the teachers and scholars who fought to bring knowledge to our people, despite every obstacle placed in their path. They didn't just teach, they empowered, uplifted, and built a future where education became a tool for liberation. So stay with us on this journey, like, share, and subscribe, because our history is more than a story, it is a legacy we must continue to build upon. Peace and love.